The Boo arc features some of the best scenes in all of Dragon Ball, from Super Saiyan 3 to Ultimate Gohan to Fusion to the Super Spirit Bomb. But it's also regarded as the worst arc in Dragon Ball Z, which is weird since it has so many good things going for it, and it's a hell of a lot better than most of Super. So let's find out exactly what is wrong with the Margin Boo arc. And no, it's not only because of Boo, because I actually think he's a pretty good villain. Also, Buhan is stronger than Kid Buu, and if you disagree, you're just wrong. The biggest issue people have with this arc is its length because it's really damn long. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. The problem here is the really poor pacing which makes it feel even longer than it actually is. But why is this? Almost everything you watch or read usually follows the three act structure where there are two inciting incidents a turning point and a climax. An arc that uses this structure almost perfectly is the Freezer Saga. The first act establishes the characters and the goal. Revive Piccolo, Tien, Yang and Chaozu using the Namekian Dragon Balls. Another thing that's so amazing about this is that the events before this arc flow perfectly from one to another. Raditz arrives, Goku dies, the Saiyans find out about the Dragon Balls, the Saiyans arrive, everyone dies, the group need to go to Namek to revive them and Frieza happens to be on Namek because the Saiyans work for him and he learned about the Dragon Balls because of their scouters. <laughs> Perfect. This brings us to the inciting incident where Gohan and Krillin watch Frieza slaughter a village to obtain a Dragon Ball and Gohan ends up saving Dende. While this is happening, Vegeta arrives and kills Kui and Goku also begins his journey to Namek, marking the end of Act 1. The turning point of this arc is marked by the arrival of the Ginyu Force who overwhelm our protagonists Ginyu! Riku! And together we are! Hey guys, I made it! Goku ship killed the Ginyus! And he's out of commission, what are the odds? This means he is unable to help Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan and Krillin against Frieza. But in typical Goku fashion, he arrives when things are at their worst but is unable to save Vegeta. As powerful as he is, he's unable to stop Frieza and resorts to using the spirit bomb which still doesn't kill him and Piccolo trips or something and Frieza kills Krillin, marking the end of Act 2. Also perfect. And as we all know, Act 3 features Goku turning into a Super Saiyan and eventually defeats Frieza and narrowly escapes the destruction of Namek. By the end of this, the gang gathered the Dragon Balls once again and everyone is revived for a happy ending. There's almost no wasted time in this arc. Every single thing that happens has a reason for happening and each event leads to the next. So let's compare this to the Buu arc. Act 1 starts with a World Martial Arts Tournament which gives Goku a reason to be brought back to Earth which is stupid but this is Dragon Ball we're talking about so I'll let it slide. Just like with the Frieza saga, we have our goal prevent Margin Buu from being released. We also have our inciting incident leading to the arrival of Margin Vegeta. And we have our climax, which is the release of Margin Buu. In the Freezer Saga, we had our overall goal, obtain the Dragon Balls and revive everyone. And then our inciting incident, the encounter with Freezer. But in the Buu Saga, the inciting incident occurs before our overall goal is established, aka stop Margin Buu. Act 2 features some of the best scenes in the series, starting with Vegeta's final atonement. We also see Goku confronting Buu and trying to buy time, leading to the introduction of Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> That leads us to the climax of this act, which is Goku returning to the afterlife. A lot of things happen in act 3, but at the same time, not a lot of things happen. Buu kills pretty much everyone and Gotenks fights him and becomes Super Saiyan 3 and then Gohan fights him and then Vegito fights him. Let's be honest, all of these moments are pretty cool, but the act is basically summarized into Boo kills everyone and then Goku kills Boo. Granted, the way in which Boo is killed is probably one of the best moments in the series. And I don't just mean the use of the spirit bomb, but also the wishes that lead up to it and Vegeta's monologue and even Hercule's contribution. The biggest difference between the Freezer saga and the Boo saga is the first act. Let's ignore the overall length of the two sagas and compare them as averages. 17% of the Freezer saga is spent establishing the characters, their goals and the inciting incident and a whopping 40% of the Boo saga is spent doing the same. The issue here is that most of the things that happen here, while undeniably cool, 
are not necessary to the story. There is so much wasted time and motion that just isn't present in the Frieza saga. If I added a bunch of cool scenes and effects to this video to increase the duration that did not serve to get my point across, my retention would end up dropping because people would get bored. That's not to say that the arc didn't have emotional moments. It had probably the most emotional moment in the entire show. But it also had things like the kids fusing into Gotenks and Gohan awakening his potential to become Ultimate Gohan, which, while cool, doesn't really affect the story at all. If you take literally any element out of the Frieza saga, it wouldn't work. If you take the Dragon Balls out, none of the characters have a reason for being on Namek. If you take out Vegeta, Krillin and Gohan have no hope against their enemies. Hell, Guru is almost just as important to the story as Goku is turning into a Super Saiyan. But if you take Gotenks out of the Buu arc, it doesn't really change. And it's the same with Ultimate Gohan and even Videl and Gohan's relationship. Now that's not to say that I don't like these events. I do. I just wish that they were worked into the story in a better way. In fairness, Fusion was incorporated into the story in a much better way later on. Not through Gotenks, but through Vegito. It was amazing to see Vegeta giving up on his pride and Goku and Vegeta sacrificing being two individual people to permanently merge to defeat Buu once and for all. But then it's all undone and the fusion ends up being pointless just like most other elements of this arc. Speaking of Vegeta, he is unquestionably the best part of this arc because oh my god he is written so 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 well. And that brings us to Majin Buu himself. I loved the idea of him having his own internal conflict and his childlike demeanor made him very terrifying in a very different way to Frieza or Cell. But beyond that, he's pretty bland. He doesn't really respond, he reacts. And he reacts to everyone in the same way, which is why he needs Babidi with him. And when Babidi is gone, we see Buu start to come into his own as we build a connection with him. And then he changes into an entirely new design and the process starts again and again, and again, and again, and again. We're not really given any time to connect with him. And while Frieza and Cell also had multiple forms, their characters remained consistent, whereas each Boo is like an entirely different person. I do love the Boo arc. It has some amazing scenes and even the bad points have some interesting concepts behind them. It's probably the arc where Dragon Ball Z felt most like Dragon Ball, which is a huge compliment, but it's also the weakest arc in the series. That is until Super comes along, but that something for another video and if you don't want to miss it be sure to subscribe see you next week